Hello, I'm Lord Jimsical, and you're watching You Have Issues, a programme all about comics. Welcome back to Superman Month. In this video, we'll be doing a small overview of Superman's supporting cast. We're going to leave out Lois Lane, Jimmy Olsen and Steel from this video, because they're each getting a video of their own. That's how awesome they are. Let's start with the Daily Planet. There are various characters such as Clark's boss, the cigar-chomping, desk-bashing editor-in-chief of the Daily Planet, Perry White. Don't call me chief! While not being as forefront as Lois, Perry White is a key character in any story involving the Daily Planet. There's also sports editor Steve Lombard, who is also Clark's rival for Lois's affections. Let's not forget gossip columnist Cap Grant, who was also a potential love interest for Clark. Did nobody get the memo about dating in the workplace? There's also the Metropolis Special Crimes Unit, or commonly known as the SCU, which is headed by Maggie Sawyer, incidentally one of the first gay characters introduced into superhero comics. Maggie fought on the front line against the big threats to Metropolis and would frequently liaise with Superman for help. She eventually left Metropolis and went to Gotham to lead Commissioner Gordon's major crimes unit in the spectacular Gotham Central and has remained there ever since. Dan, terrible Turpin, is Maggie's second in command on the SCU. Hot-headed, tough and determined, he can hold his own against most super-powered villains and frequently jokes that he handled the bad guys fine until Superman showed up. Who could forget Jonathan and Martha Kent, the unintentional foster parents to baby Kal-El? Driving through a field in Kansas, they were the nearest to the crash site of Kal-El's ship and recovered him from the wreckage. These two are important figures in Superman's characterization as they are the ones who instilled the courageous heroic traits in him when growing up. Jor-El, of course, is Superman's biological father. A top scientist, he was a member of the Science Council on Krypton and was the first to predict the seismic activity threatening the planet. Sadly, he was considered a lunatic and was left to his own devices while the planet was gradually moving towards its doom. Mostly seen in origin stories and flashback sequences, he's shown to be a very wise man, although interpretations outside of comics vary greatly. Kara Zor-El is the cousin of Kal-El, but she's from the Kryptonian city of Kandor. Her pre-crisis origin is as follows. Like her cousin, she was also sent to Earth in a rocket as a baby, but was caught in a kryptonite asteroid field and caused her to enter a field of suspended animation until eventually arriving on Earth while Clark was operating as Superboy. However, during the crisis on Infinite Earths, she died during the final battle against the Anti-Monitor. After the crisis, none of the heroes remembered the event and were unaware of the existence of Superman's cousin. She was replaced by a shape-shifting artificial life form known as Matrix, but still took the mantle of Supergirl and was created by the heroic Lex Luthor from Earth 3. This incarnation of Supergirl slowly ended up fading into the background to make way for the real deal. In 2004, Kara Zor-El was reintroduced into post-crisis continuity by crash landing in Gotham Bay in the excellent story Superman Batman Supergirl and went on to star in her own successful solo series. Originally, Superboy followed the adventures of Superman as a boy operating in Smallville. Various pre-crisis adventures depicted him as a childhood friend of Lex Luthor as well as the likes of Bruce Wayne and Oliver Queen. After the crisis, his exploits as Superboy were written out of continuity and he was reintroduced as a teenage clone of Superman in the wake of Superman's death. He was depicted as a rebellious upstart initially, but then had his personality fleshed out further with his adventures with Robin and Impulse as the team Young Justice, which later evolved into the modern incarnation of the Teen Titans. His 90s adventures are quite a great laugh, I'd recommend them. Well now is a super-powered hero with almost exactly the same powers as Superman. He also comes from a similar planet to Krypton called Daxum. When Superboy first met him, he had amnesia and thought he was Kryptonian. Superboy, thinking he was up to no good, tried to trick him into revealing he wasn't Kryptonian by painting some lumps of lead green. This did affect him, but not in the same way Superboy thought it might. It turns out Daxamites are weakened by lead in the same way that Superboy is weakened by Kryptonite. But unlike Kryptonite, the effect is permanent and Monel will eventually die. In order to save him, he put Monel in the Phantom Zone until he could find a cure. Monel remained there until Brainiac 5 of the Legion of Superheroes found the cure some a thousand years later. Well, better late than never. Speaking of the Legion... The Legion of Superheroes are a team from the 30th century based in New Metropolis. Hearing the old stories about Superman influenced them to be heroes and form a team of their own. In return, they went back in time to help Superboy become a better hero. 
Time paradoxes aside, they are a team assembled from all over the universe, each with a power that is unique to them. Such as Lightning Lad's electricity and Cosmic Boy's magnetism. They all have the ability to fly as well, due to Brainiac 5's invention of the Legion Flight Ring. Now that's definitely something I'd like to get my hands on. The Legion of Superheroes is the only series that hasn't been completely rebooted by the New 52, therefore the only DC title I'm willing to read. The Earth 2 version of Supergirl is pretty much exactly the same, except for her appearance. She ended up trapped on Earth 1, and due to crisis on infinite Earths, even her Kryptonian origin changed to actually being from Atlantis. This was thankfully changed back to Krypton during Infinite Crisis. She has had her own miniseries, and recently her own ongoing title, that was both successful and critically praised. She was a member of Justice League International during the 90s, and has remained a leading figure on the Justice Society. People are often very quick to throw negative comments her way, mostly because she has big breasts, and they're very much on display. I mean, so what if she dresses a little provocatively? It's her choice! Plus, she's one of the toughest, headstrong, and independent characters of the DC Universe. She runs and owns Star Enterprises in her human identity of Karen Star, and has even been the chairwoman of the Justice Society. So all that, and Kryptonian powers? No wonder some readers are a little intimidated. Crypto was Baby kal dog on Krypton. He was used as a test subject for the original rocket, but was lost in space, only arriving on Earth years later when Clark was Superboy. So like all Kryptonian beings on Earth, he manifests his power from our yellow sun and becomes a super dog. He had tons of adventures pre-crisis, but then seemed to just disappear. It wasn't until the early 2000s when he returned. This time he has taken up allegiance with the new Superboy, Connor Kent. Since then he has become a regular again in the DC Universe, getting up to all sorts of shenanigans. Gangbuster is a vigilante who operates out of the metropolis area of Suicide Slum. He is high school teacher Jose Delgado and became Gangbuster to literally bust up gangs of kids, most of who should be in school. He made his debut post-crisis and although he doesn't actually have any superpowers to speak of, he is extremely good at fighting. He was also at one point a love interest for Lois Lane. He became paralysed for a time after trying to rescue Lois and some Metropolis citizens from a particularly nasty and strong metahuman. Due to science, he eventually got back the use of his legs and carried on as Gangbuster, becoming a staple of the Metropolis hero community. Originally a Golden Age hero, he was brought back by Jack Kirby in the 70s as a clone of the original, now dead guardian, Jim Harper. Over the years, he has been head of security at Cadmus and leader of the Metropolis Science Police, as well as being a truly awesome superhero. Thank you for watching this third episode of Superman Month. Please subscribe and stick around for some more Superman Month.